Good afternoon, Frank Watkins, 20th of May 2016. I received an email during the week and thank you to the person concerned. Just asking, uh, at the end of the day, asking exits. How do you get out? When do you get out? Why do you get out? What gets you out? Now, I think pretty much every pro trader member would admit that getting into the market is pretty easy and getting out is the most difficult thing you have to do. Now, I'll just run through a few scenarios. The first thing is that the easiest and best thing to do is to get stopped out. As you raise your stops, you just one day get stopped out. Now, that's, uh, that's pretty much been it for me probably up until a couple of years ago. I mean, it's still the nicest thing that can happen, but uh, it doesn't happen very often in the volatile market that we've had over the last few years, say three or four years. Um, the markets, in every stock just suddenly seems to have these big dives. And um, if you've got a stop loss placed in the market, invariably, You'll get hit during the day, and by the end of the day, um, you'd be wishing that you were back in there. However, point one, the easiest thing to do, or the, the nicest thing to do, is to be stopped out. Now, to avoid being stopped out intraday on some you know, director's uh, downgrading profit forecasts or whatever, uh, a few years back I moved to basically using dual moving averages or dual moving average crossovers as an exit because then you're actually waiting for the price to you're waiting for the moving averages to cross and the price um, get out basically at market the following morning now again that's okay for a bull market but rarely during the sideways market we've had for the last four or five years, rarely has something run up enough to be able to just sit back, relax, and use a dual moving average. However, going back to a bull market, you, I don't believe that uh, you can beat a 34, 55 day dual moving average crossover as your exit. Um, Perhaps with some of the higher price stocks, you might look at 2189. Um, the other thing with exiting, we always go back to that stock a month later, a day later, six months later, and either curse because it's gone higher than where we got out, or rejoice because it's kept on falling. Uh, I pretty much have a rule once I'm out of a stock if I don't get another buy signal why would I bother looking at that stock again I delete them from watch lists I, I don't want to know once I'm out I'm happy there's no point having a look at it a month later and getting unhappy because it's a lot higher unless you have a re-entry rule now a re-entry rule may be something as simple as you know, breaking a new high or whatever, but you need a rule for re-entry. Now, the other issue with exiting is we want to get out at the top. Well, that really, if you stop and think about it, is pretty ridiculous. How do you know it's the top until after you're out? So I might be stating the obvious, but... Um, People do want to pick the top. Believe me, in 40 years of trying, I believe I've actually done it once, perfectly. And that's in tens of thousands of trades. Actually, no, twice. I just remembered another one. Um, some little piece of rubbish I got out at 6.9 cents and it just never got back over that level. Anyway, uh, let's try... Oh, the, the other thing with getting out, split your parcel. Uh, I've spoken to so many people recently who bought 
for instance, say, rap at 10 cents and got out at 19, and it's been to 30, um, so on and so forth. So split your parcel. Trade in big enough lumps to make it worth splitting your parcel. Um, whatever volume that is, you know, it's got to be enough for you. You might be happy doing a uh, hundred thousand ten cent stocks. You know, a ten thousand dollar trade. It goes up a cent. You grab a thousand dollars. Thanks a lot. See you later. Um, personally, I'd you know, I'd, I'd do a few more than that. I'd be trying to do two hundred thousand, and if it goes up a cent, knock off a thousand. Uh, sorry, a hundred thousand of them. Put a thousand bucks in the pocket and see what happens with the rest. So think along those lines. Now, looking at a couple of examples. Uh, S, whoops, S W M. Uh, I've mentioned for quite a while we've been in this stock. We've had a really good run out of it. Uh, we've also had a dividend out of it. Now, uh, for for some time, okay. Firstly, we bought this breakout. Uh, so we our first entry was 88 cents. We watched it come back and touch about 86. We did not have stops in there. I think part of that was dividend. So we basically just let it go and the on balance volume remained pretty solid during that pullback from a dollar seven back down to eighty seven. So twenty cent, twenty percent pullback, but on balance volume didn't um, decline and there wasn't suddenly huge volume. So during this we just figured that there's a bit of profit taking, there's a divvy, there's whatever, there's no great selling, let's see what happens. Now we had this run up here and for the last week and a half I've been thinking gee you know we've got resistance here at $1.20, I'd like to knock them out at $1.16, 17 I looked at that for days on end thinking you know should knock it out. Um, two days ago on Wednesday, uh, actually that's not the day, on Wednesday we did knock it out, uh, knocked them out at a dollar fourteen and by the end of the day uh, looked like very clever people. The next day with a close at 105 and a half obviously we are clever. Then um, Today finished at a dollar six. Now, if we look at it, we can see this decline, particularly today, was not done on high volume. Uh, there was a fair amount of selling Wednesday, Thursday. OBV has dipped a fraction, but to my mind, this stock has just had a go at getting through the old resistance, couldn't make it. Profit taking came in. That will more than likely go through that $1.20 level. Um, why did we sell? I can't answer that. I wish I could. We had some very nice profits in there, thank you very much. Um, not a huge amount of volume being done. So, uh, yeah, we just bailed. Uh, I don't think anyone's ever complained when we send out a profitable trade. Uh, I wish I had an answer to the question why did we get out of that if if I if I had an ego I'd probably say it was instinct or something well you know if you play enough golf and trade enough I'm afraid you just can't afford to have an ego to go with it we just got out simple as that now by the same token uh, I think everyone knows we're in SIP and have been for some time and the wrong code has come up. SIP um, Sigma Pharmaceuticals. Now, once again, uh, we've, we've had this had a dream run. Again, we bought about 88 in here. 
we added on the break of a dollar here. Um, we touched a dollar twenty today, and we're looking at this thing. You know, we have got stacks of profit in this. So, why didn't we get out of this one? Um, and I'm I'm trying to find some old resistance back here uh, okay there it is there we have the same sort of resistance at the $1.20 mark um, sorry at the uh, $1.10 mark and we have the big resistance up here at $1.50 so when we purchased the breakout back here somewhere we were just hoping this would go to a dollar fifty back to the old resistance now that we're at a dollar eighteen and touched a dollar twenty today um, got through that dollar ten we're thinking maybe we should add to the position if it breaks a dollar twenty there's another thirty cents left in it so thirty cents on top of a dollar twenty be a nice return has this gone up too far too fast on balance volume still looks good lot of volume come in on a weekly basis um, so why have we sold one and not the other again I can't really answer that um, but this this thing's just going along beautifully I guess um, I guess if we had a, a, a big down day and a big down day might be five six seven cents we might revise our thinking but at the moment that dollar ten should hold it I wouldn't I wouldn't want it to go back down another say 10 or 11 or 12 cents to get stopped out there's just that much profit there I don't want to give one cent of it back um, if we look at the dual moving averages uh, let's 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 just say we were going to run with dual moving averages on this uh, in the exponential I've got 2189 now by the time they cross over we will have given back a lot more than 10 cents or something so I'm not inclined to use uh, 34.55 perhaps I've got my weighted moving averages set at 13 and 34 which will follow the price more closely that actually looks better get rid of the 21 uh, sorry 34.55 whoops get rid of the 3455 now we're just left with the um, 1334 and that actually looks uh, it's it's hugging the data a lot closer so maybe that's the way to go the other thing is the last couple of days not not big volume on new highs so um, you know, should we sell now at a dollar nineteen, dollar eighteen, take the profits, rebuy on a break of dollar twenty? Look, I don't know. Um, I, I wish I had the answers. Um, I do know that you know, with SWM, we're out. I'm happy. We've made a profit. I just don't care about SWM again. I won't even look at that for re-entry. I'll continue to do my normal uh, scans and if I get a buy signal on my normal scans on SWM fine I'll probably take it um, IFN was another one uh, I think there's a few people in this one uh, it's been running along beautifully uh, I mean yeah how good is that now you 13 34 has crossed several times in here but still hugging the data perhaps you might use a 1334 if we go to the 2189 we can see that we avoided all of this stuff here uh, bearing in mind we went from 53 cents down to 36 cents so if you're using the moving averages that would have been a very nerve-wracking ride which again is why I say just use your moving averages during a bull market 
Uh, so what to do now with IFN? Well, maybe uh, a break of 88, 89, 90 cents is add to your position. The issue really is no one knows. I have no idea what the Dow is going to do tonight or our market on Monday or IFN. Um, I do know that the easiest time to make a decision is before you enter the stock. Um, now, here's, here's another one. We, we put out the um, screed on GOR the other day and it decided to bolt. I know some people sold 63 and a half yesterday. Um, why did they do that? Well, just look how far OBV has gone. They bought 53 and a half. They had 10 cents. They had 20% there in uh, six or seven days. So they've taken it. Now, uh, I'm not sure if they've got a re-entry rule or not. But, um, you know, great trade. If GOR goes to $5 in two years' time and you're not in there, well... You haven't been doing your scanning and you haven't got re-entry rules. But look, really all I've done tonight is ramble on and on. I hope, uh, hope I've answered the question and I hope I've helped other people um, somehow. Uh, it, it's a really curly one. I think exiting is the, the toughest part of trading. Um, best advice, split your parcel. That's, that's number one. Uh, and potentially profit target old resistance levels. Uh, SWM, it was $1.20. SIP is $1.20, but we're not doing it. Anyway, um, hopefully, hopefully I've been of some use tonight. Thanks very much. I'll talk to you next week. Cheers.